They say story is king, right? And everyone enjoys a background story. The fine folks at WHRO TV reached out and asked if they could showcase my story, my brand. They didn't realize what they were walking into. A house full of creativity beyond my own leather. What follows is a culmination of more than four days of filming and look behind the scenes at Mascon Leather. Let's see where this goes. I always wanted to make leather that was more artistic than functional. Instead of people seeing my items and thinking how many cards can fit in that pocket or you know, how much cash can I fit in that pouch, I wanted them to look at it and say, that's pretty. So I had to blend aesthetics with functionality, but I lean more towards aesthetics. When I graduated from college, I was working in construction for my family business. It was hot in the summers, cold in the winters, and my dad always said, use your brain, not your hands. So I got a job at the credit union. So I kept moving up and moving up. And then the next thing I knew, I was just getting tired of the whole atmosphere of banking and going to meetings and no individuality. So I just started looking for things to do. I was ordering some planner from another leather crafter years ago, and I asked him if he could just send me a piece of leather to make a pocket on the back of my bag with, and he did. And it was just oddly enjoyable. That's really what started it. I researched and researched and watched YouTube videos and I learned how to do edges, I learned how to do glue better. You know, I would take a little bit of this person's style, a little bit of that person's style, and then put it together and make my style. And then I accidentally got good, I guess. I figured if I were to take those eight hours that I was at the credit union and made leather items that I could make just as much or more. So, I put my two weeks in. If anyone were to come to this house at any given time, you could find almost any sort of crafting or artwork going on. My wife is an artist artist, painter, stained glass, pencil, charcoal, so what are you doing upstairs? I'm working on the Brando, and I've got all the pockets cut out and ready to start putting it together. And what's the next step so I can keep you on track and focused on what you need to be doing? What is it you're doing? Are you getting your stuff done? <laughs> I'm playing because I've worked this morning, so I've earned to play now. She's also a hairstylist, which is an art form all on its own. And she's damn good at it. One day I looked out in the backyard and my son Mason was stacking up bricks. And I went out there and he had built a little forge in the yard. And that's when I was like, I think he's serious about it. What are you working on, Mace? Tana. And he just started making everything you could imagine. It looks like katana to you. It looks exactly like a katana. And my other son, Nick, does lathe work, so he makes pens and duck calls. What's up, Nick? What's going on? Hey, what kind of wood is that? It's a multicolored laminated wood. Both sons have acquired a craft that has nothing at all to do with my craft. It was a lot harder to go out back and build a forge and study how fire works and how metal works, or go research what wood goes in with what and how to drill the hole, and I have no idea how to make a duck call. I don't know how to make a pen. It's just cool that they did something different, but they're still just as passionate about it. I like to be surrounded with things that are pleasing to the eye, and Colonial Williamsburg is pleasing to the eye. You tell me to close my eyes and slowly pull the curtains 
I hear you shut for lights. How I wish you could cut for noise. How I wish you could cut for noise. I feel fortunate to live in this area because of the history and how accessible the Colonial District is. If you look at my work, you'll see a lot of flow. You don't want your eye to just suddenly stop. And I get a lot of that from architecture in Colonial Williamsburg. A regular department store wallet, there is one and a half to two ounce thick. And mine's at least four times thicker. And a department store wallet can last sometimes 10 years, but I would say average, mine would probably last 275 years? I don't know. It'll last your lifetime, that's for sure. And probably your kids. I pretend to sleep while you dress. All I hear is a noise. All I hear is a noise. Well, when I figured out that branding was important, I started reading books and researching and watching YouTube. That's when I realized social media was the way of the future in terms of marketing. I started with the Facebook page and then I researched in photography. So then I would take a picture and post it. Practice, take a picture, post it. I just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper. And then my niece said, why don't you open up an Instagram account? What I try to do is have it so that someone could imagine them in the photograph as a story. When I go to edit this photo, I'll pop the saturation to draw the eye there. Anyone can see what the wallet is, but you might as well have fun with the story. People see the picture and almost instantly recognize that it's a mask on leather photo. So I'm able to do well with the leather and also do well with branding. Everyone wanted me to do YouTube videos. What I've found with the video is that I enjoy the creative process because it's, it's so different than photography and obviously so different than leather. I have so much more area, so many more angles, lights. It is a lot more creative. It's a lot more satisfying. I think I spilled coffee in the first video and people commented that it made it so that it wasn't just this step, this step, this step. Well, then I realized I never took into consideration who my audience was. I should have known because that's what I did. I'm able to do well with the leather and also do well with reach and the branding. Did you finish your painting? I finished it the best that I could with how it turned out. It didn't exactly turn out the way I wanted to, but I'll make do. And did you finish upstairs your wallet? It is actually almost done. Tomorrow morning, it'll be finished. And what's the next one? Uh, that's a good question. I guess I'm gonna have to look on the list. The fact that my items are sold globally and that people are willing to wait it's flattering and very humbling. Three years ago, you were in a bank. Now you're crafting leather. Do you feel like a man? I'm blessed. I never expected it. Especially that there's a mask on leather wallet almost in every country. We're very fortunate to both be able to be home and do something that we really love. And the fact that both of our kids are doing something they both enjoy. It's pretty amazing. As long as everyone in this house is doing what they like, it makes my decision to leave the corporate world the right decision, for sure. And we're happy. Yes, 20 years, and now we're finally happy. Makes a big difference, though. It's unbelievable. <laughs>